in love with the Benji. Watch me go get it. Try to tell him get a bag, but niggas ain't get it. For all the shit I never had, I'ma go get it. These niggas ain't with me. Remember them days when I ain't have a penny. Remember them days in the slum we were robbing and clutching the city. Yo, what to do? What's good, YouTube, man? It's your boy, it's TL. Welcome back to Stunner Light TV, man. If you're a Stunner, this is the place that be, man. You know, nobody don't lean coach is weed. Everything's on me, man. We back at it again. What another? Bang, man. What's going on, man? And next up, we are inside prison. Britain behind bars. Well, inside Britain's prison behind bars. Season one, episode one. Um, go ahead and check out something new, bro. If y'all like videos like this, y'all comment down below. Um, any more videos y'all want me to next? Yeah, uh, make sure y'all leave a like on the video. Yeah, make sure y'all please hit that subscribe button. Bro. Let me run into this video. Yeah, inside Britain prisons. Behind, I don't know if bro wrote it backwards or that's how it's supposed to go, but <laughs> uh, yeah, man, y'all like these videos, bro. Y'all know, y'all comment down below. Um, I was doing them before, I don't, I don't even know if y'all like them or not, but yeah, man, I'm gonna go ahead and check it out though, because um, yeah, man, I just want to do something different, bro. <clears throat> Ninety-two thousand. That's a lot of people, bro. Ninety-two thousand five hundred. That's a lot of fucking people in jail, bro. Oh, I think Spike was in a threatening manner before, but not, nothing quite that threat. I've seen crack houses in better condition than this. Do you expect crack houses to be like the Reds? There's more drugs in prison than there is on the app. Yeah, that's what I said. That's all the time. Sis, you got to be the ass. This is where it really starts. Feces and urine being thrown all over the office. This is going to leave there. I've got to be 250 pounds in there. Keep talking, you're going to go in the safe. Screws off, lads. You know, society washes their hands with these guys. I don't want to do that. Basically, I kept my friend hostage. I'm sorry about this. I'm very sorry, but God with it. She was like, what do you mean? And then I pulled out the blade. Tracy! 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 I think I'm liking this one, man. It's going down in here, bro. <laughs> no cap. Britain's prison estate stretches from Inverness to Dartmoor. Over six months, we followed the extremes of life inside. From women's prisons. <laughs> Young offender institutes. We don't stop asking around race for moving cells. To high security jails. Have you been doing drugs? It's a system that costs the UK taxpayer over £4.8 billion every year. In addition, millions more pause through our jails every day. <laughs> directly into the hands of prisoners. <laughs> He has told us while he's been in custody, he's made just over £280,000 by selling mobile phones and drugs. And he's only been in eight months. I mean, mm. he's got to work a decade to earn that much. Damn. I'm going to be general. Come on, smash up. 
For the 300 female prisoners at Downview, money is crucial to survive. They get it from prison jobs, from friends and family, Come on, ladies. and from some rather unorthodox sources. Hello, Peter. How are you? Did you put that money in the bank account? Oh, why not? For 31 year old repeat offender Gemma James, making money has always been the name of the game. Now I'm an expert at shoplifting. Everyone is trying to hustle. I, I learned from young to manipulate everyone quite quickly. Gemma is serving five years inside for burglary, but she's found a way of making money from men on the outside. We put a little photo and a little message in a magazine, Lonely Hearts column. Most people put naked photos in there, but I won't do that. I don't put my photo in there, I put other people, so I don't want no one to know, and I'm never going to meet these people. But some of them write filthy letters. She's got a farm mail for my sugar daddies. <laughs> sugar um, pounds. Uh, so you've got the same letter twice. Pussy, Has pussy, he got dementia? Pussy, pussy, love, juicy pussy, loves pussy, pussy, love, juicy pussy. I love both your pussy. I never met them. I love you, man. I never met them. Nigga say I love both of your pussies. <laughs> like he in jail, nigga. Like damn. Three hundred pounds. Oh my god. He's gonna send me three hundred pounds. Where do you find these poor men? They're 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 to pay off spice dealers on the wing. Hello? How's it hanging? Did you get my letter? You know you haven't sent me money for about two weeks? Three weeks? Uh, I've had to double bubble off people, yeah? And they're saying if it's not here, like, within the next few days, I'm going to get beaten up. They sent me money. I've just had a falling out with them because the prison decided to swap the letters over in the envelopes. Two, two men that I write to, They've swapped the letters over, so they've got each other's letters, so they're going mad at me and not sending me money right now. Should I give you a... Should I give you a little bit of data? They did that on purpose. They did. Prison Green. They did that on purpose, bro. <laughs> the details. My friends to put it in her account. Not a bank account. You just put it in an envelope and post it. But I'm in trouble. <laughs> Oh, whatever, bye. Send my photos back. I just sent you loads of photos. One on back. At first, I had about 14 of them. And I, and then, then I got out. I never go and meet them. I never go and see them. And so slowly, I've lost them all. It's, it's naughty what I do, but I think if I was really a young girl, 16, 17, they'd be trying to manipulate me. Across many prisons in Britain, Friday is canteen day. A chance for prisoners to buy treats with the money they earn inside and money they get from friends and family outside. <laughs> As tobacco was banned in prisons in 2018, many inmates now buy vapes, which are very tradable. They're worth a lot of money inside prison, ten times what you pay outside. I think I'd heard recently that a lighter, a plastic disposable lighter, that you probably get three for a pound for in the pound shop, in prison is 50 or 60 quid. And Lyle was looking after me today because that I could see an opportunity downstairs where the door was unlocked. I went in and I robbed eight packets of apes. And I'm that worried. I put two pairs of knickers on so that if they strip search me, when I put the towel around me, I've still got knickers on. And then in these knickers, I'm going to show you a secret. As well, so when I get strip searched and I've got two pairs of knickers on, they won't know. Have a towel around me, and I'll drop my jaws, but I've got another pair on. They, they, they're never going to know. With violence and drugs endemic in Britain's jails, the authorities have drafted in 2,500 rookie officers across the country. In HMP Bullingdon, Oxfordshire, an alarming 75% of officers are in their first two years of service. Everybody's ignoring me. It's only about 50 
All right, all right. No need to shout at me. This is my first day live, mate, so give me some slack. Okay. Today, former office worker John Aldridge is starting his first shift. He will have to control 65 inmates and one of the three spurs on Sea Wing. What are you doing up here, buddy? What are you doing up here? This sprawling prison is home to over 1,100 prisoners, ranging from shoplifters to murderers. Oh, on the one, sir, let's go, let's move on, spur three, please. 26 year old John has just completed a 10 week college training course. I decided to become a prison officer. Um, I was trawling through job adverts and I clicked on it and had a read of the job description. And I thought, actually, that sounds really quite interesting. Violence against staff in Britain's uh, prisons no, has risen it. dramatically as gangs of prisoners battle for control of the wings. It's hey, up yeah. by nearly a third in the past 12 oh. months. Oh. See, I be hating shit like that. Like, the police, like, bro, don't be holding me while this nigga beating my ass still. Like, nigga, that shit don't work. That ain't gonna help, nigga. 130 assaults on officers last year alone. A little bit nerve wracking. Um, college seems quite a long way removed from here. Looking forward okay. to actually, I guess, taking the training wheels off. <laughs> you basically like passing your test and taking the L plates off and putting little green peas on. It's 7.45 in the morning. Unlock at Bullingdon. John's first task is to check on the prisoners. Step back a bit, mate, for a break. Oh, I just want to come in and have a chat. I don't want to chat. I don't want to talk through a door, that's all. I don't want to talk. What are you talking about? Right. Oh, I'm not going to you back up. I'm not going to let you out now to go back behind your door. It's just so new, you don't really know what you're doing yet. You giving me a bit of jip isn't going to help me learn, though, is it? If you want to fucking talk out of me. No, I don't. Why are you standing there causing shit? I'm not trying to cause shit. I'm just like... What are you doing? It's aggravating the situation. Oh, I'm not. Alright, I'll go away. They don't like it. Sit. Leave behind the doors. I thought I was going to be alright today. I don't feel all right now. In need of serious advice on managing the prisoners, John seeks help from one of the most respected men on the wing, 35-year-old prisoner, top dog, Anthony Gooch. Mills are really quite upset with me this morning. Yeah, the thing is, though, you can say something to someone, they can take it the wrong way. It's like, you know what I mean? Yeah. The thing is, you're finding that boundary in between. Yeah. Of doing the job and giving a bit of leeway to certain people. He's come onto the wing and he's a typical new officer. He's uh, doing everything by the book as he was trained. Um, and if you do that, it sort of goes against the grain with certain inmates. You have the attitude of coming in and going by the book. You sort of gain a lot of enemies very, very quickly. And as we've seen in the past, inmates have uh, ways to deal with officers like this. Normally ends up with uh, a big bucket of uh, urine or excrement thrown over their head or, or they're assaulted. Um, so it is key that they come in and they, they get to know the people and they learn how the wing is run. He's made threats to go up the bars, made threats to harm staff, made threats to disrupt the regime. <laughs> One officer who knows better than most how to gain the respect of the prisoners is supervising officer Mark Walker. I'm the type of guy that will have a laugh and a joke with them. I'll take the mickey out of them. But they know that when I am serious and I need things to be done, the majority of the time it gets done. It's a lesson that John needs to learn, and fast. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Oh, what, dickhead? What are you going to do? Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, what? You're a dickhead. I am not. You're a dickhead. You're a dickhead, bro. They're not. You're a dickhead. You're a dickhead. They're not. Fuck off, you dickhead. I have just been called a dickhead. That's what's just happened there. Multiple times. Try and distance yourself. When it's like yeah, that, I did my just try. I know you're doing it. My kitchen. brain. I was like, oh god. Yeah. If I'm being honest, I was starting to get a little bit scared. There, yeah. he's bigger than me. This is why this is our safe area. Just put distance between yourself. It's not backing off. It's not walking away. Nah, it's for your safety. Yeah. Even just frustrated and not getting the right answer. Mm -hmm. You've just started. Yeah. It's still a learning process. Oh, oh. Some people know, get frustrated like that. They do. All right. I've been spoken to in a threatening manner before, but no, nothing quite that threatening. And he's a big bloke. 
He ain't constant enough to work in the prison. He don't know what he's doing. He just lit. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's a bit of a feminine officer. Not being not like, racist or wherever you call that, but I think he's a bit he's a bit soft to work in a prison. So these people are coming out of college and then they're coming into here and they're looking at people that have done eight years in prison that have not screws out every week. His mentality, he should be an officer. It is. I don't think so, personally. If you took this mortgage after doing six months in and stuck him in Wandsworth, oh my god. He'd quit. He'd quit the same day. I swear to God, he'd, he'd walk straight out and go, oh, no, not for me. Yeah, this is a Jewish officer. This is your perfect definition. Of he's quite toned. He's fair. He's got a pretty mouth. And he's, he's good. This is what we want. There are over 3,800 women behind bars in Britain, and they are far more likely than men to be jailed for a first offence. And keeping order presents its own unique challenges. A lot of people say I could never work with women, but they're not violent. It is a lot of mental games with them, but if you can deal with that side of it, then you can get on with it. 23-year-old Ellie Roberts is one of six officers who controls 100 inmates on Sea Wing. Today, she is having a weekly catch-up with prisoner Gemma. Right, how has your week been? Um, it's been really good, actually. You've got a job on the wing yeah. as a painter. And you've helped me so much. Yeah. You haven't judged me. You've, no matter what I've done, however naughty I've been, you've all, you've all supported me. I'm getting closer to my faith. Mm -hmm. I'm reading my religious books. And I'm not tempted to... I'm not getting cravings. I'm not tempted... Because everything's positive right now and everyone's helping me. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to let everyone down. I don't want to let myself down. Ellie is impressed with Gemma's progress. But not everyone on the wing is so enamoured. You little nitty, you little fucking thing. I'm ignoring her. She's doing this because she thinks I've had drugs and not shared it with her. Well, have you? No, I haven't. Okay. She wants me to beat her, innit? And I will beat her. No, you won't. Just go backwards again. Gemma. No, do it. Come, do it. Gemma. Come, Tracy. Move, move, move. Move. Move the iron then. Come. The iron, then. Come. 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 Because you think the iron then. Can I have it? Come on, Tracy, please. Move the iron then. Tell her she's running out of the office for an iron. Tracy. No, you let her run out of the office for an iron. Tell her to come around. Oh, wow. Don't you grasp me up. Don't grasp me up. You fucking bitch. You're a 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 bitch. She's a grass. She put Lisa Casey do down the stairs. Why would you do that? Sit down. I'm not going to move from an iron. Because they're trying to provoke me, innit? They're trying to provoke me. Yes, I know, innit? You're wise into it. I don't give two shit. Bro, I can't wait. Yeah, tight, bro. They're trying to provoke me, innit? 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 They're Tracy! 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 Tracy!
Britain's prisons are bursting at the seams as more of us than ever are residing at Her Majesty's pleasure. 62% of British jails are overcrowded. Bigger numbers means ever greater pressure on the men and women who are responsible for maintaining order inside. And then again, that's if that's when they stop. That's if they stop like arresting people for bullshit. Like, just stop with that. New officers have been recruited in the past year to help ease the strain. All the landing papers in one go. Happy days. Yeah, yeah. New officer John Aldridge needs to be on his toes. He's already been seriously intimidated and is desperate to gain some credibility with the prisoners. Mr. Aldridge, hack it, please. Mr. Aldridge, please, hack it. Oh, Frank. Frank. The informal rules of prison mean officers rely on influential prisoners to help keep order. On Sea Wing, it's down to Anthony Gooch. He's on remand for six months for an armed robbery he says he didn't commit. On Sea Wing, he's trusted by officers. I'm an insider and a violent obstruction rep. So where uh, a prisoner might find it a bit difficult to go and talk to an officer about certain problems he's got on the wing, whether he owes money for drugs or there's a bit of a beef from outside that's come into the prison, he can come to us um, so he doesn't think it's a bit of a grass for going to the officers and then we can try and intervene and try and sort it out or uh, sort a solution out without him becoming violent. Supervising officer Mark Walker is particularly concerned by one new prisoner. You're here as a violence reduction rep. Yeah. Got an issue with one of the lads that's recently come on. Yeah. Uh, he's quite vulnerable. He's just received a life sentence. He's stating to us that he's under threat on a unit. Yeah. But you've been on the spell all the time. I need to know whether um, he's going to be okay. Because if he is under threat, I need to move him off the unit. Yeah, this is the one that came in for the uh, murder. Yes. Yes, I'm aware. Yeah, yeah, I can talk about that. No problem. Just three days into the job, Officer John Aldridge has been given the duty of checking on the high risk prisoner Walker's worried about. He makes a shocking discovery and immediately calls Gooch and fellow officers for assistance. The inmate is covered in blood in what appears to be an act of self harm. A code red is called when blood has been spilled. While Aldridge clears the wing, Gooch steps in to take charge of the situation. I come up and done his check at half past yeah, two. And he's on two hours of the office. He pressed his cell bell, so I come up and he was banging on the door. I thought, I couldn't see what through the office glass. I thought he smashed his head open. It was all foot pouring down. I've got a vulnerable inmate uh, that's been given a life sentence. Um, suffering from very severe paranoia, um, but the paranoia has got so much that he's decided to take a razor and cut his throat all the way around. Um, where the officers were at the door and they wanted to go in, he's then paranoid the officers are going to hurt him. Uh, so I went in on my own and he handed over the knife and we've managed to treat him and he's gone off. But um, someone like that needs to be down healthcare to get their, um, their head in the right place. I've done the check. Yeah, no, 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 that's fine. That's not you done it, was it? Yeah. That new officer's probably never seen anyone cut themselves up before. It takes a bit of getting used to it. So find him. Yeah. yeah. You okay? Uh, I'm not sure, really, to be honest with you. Yeah, um, I can't say you might sleep. You want to go to the table? You've got the care team available if you need anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll go out the back and have a chat with you. Yeah. 
An estimated 150 million a year is spent on mental health services for inmates, but incidents of self-harm and suicide are at a record high. In Downview, Gemma James is back in trouble and waiting to see the duty governor. Gemma was caught trying to climb a prison fence. Now she faces an adjudication, which could add time to her sentence. And we adjourn this for you to take legal advice, don't we? Yeah. And did you say that? No, because I sat on the police at You sat yourself? Yeah. So he won't represent me. So, this next charge. Uh, Governor Chris James attempted to climb the fence between the AstroTurf and the chapel after making threats to climb on a roof. She had to be assisted down and escorted back to the wing. That concludes the evidence. Do you agree with that? Yeah. So where did you think he was going to end up? Here, down the stage. No, no, no. When you're climbing the fence. Well, no, no, really. I, I was just frustrated and angry and I wasn't thinking. And I, I was being impulsive. How does that not happen again? I can't guarantee that nothing will happen again, but I'm hoping that I've passed that stage now. And when I've realised that everyone still supports me no matter what I do, I don't, I don't want to let myself down or anyone else. In light of all you've said, Gemma, and obviously, you know, the evidence have presented to me and the things that have been mentioned before, um, it's inevitable that I find this charge proven. OK. Can I have the conduct report, please? She can be very polite and follow the regime, and on the other hand, she can be rude and disobey the prison regime. Ms James is a manipulative person and was manipulating staff in the past to gain certain things like emergency votes or be allowed to get her TV back. Recent days, I've seen Ms James under the influence of the substance on many occasions and also causing problems like jumping through the window. Looking at your adjudication report, and your conduct reports, there's been more downs and ups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're sitting at the moment then with 14 days stoppage you end at 80% and 14 days loss of county. And that's it. Thank you. All right. Because right. you know I've known each other about 15 years, so I'm going to... It's been a while, isn't it? Thank you. I've known Gemma an awful long time, and it's very easy to get depressed ourselves when you see people coming back and not seemingly changing. But actually, she, she struggles sometimes to see the good in herself. And there's plenty there, and she's got lots to get. So, yeah, fingers crossed. I'm worried that I'll get into because I've got a lot of candy, which will be. You're going to be on my side of the bread. Gemma got lots of canteen on her adjudication, which means that she can't order any vapes, she can't order any phone credit, she can't order chocolate, she can't order anything like that. She'll probably start playing about and trying to get any way she can get anything. Thank you for all your help. Just don't stop messing around. Thank you. She's crazy, bro. She's only had a couple of months. In Bullingdon, rookie officer John Aldridge has also been called to a meeting with the governor. So, John, that's the guy, yeah. A third of prison officers quit within a year of starting the job. So Governor Ian Blakeman is keen to check on John after he witnessed a case of self-harm two days ago. Damn, so a so massively traumatic event you had the day before yesterday. Yeah, it was that So you're shaking you up a bit? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't sleep at all on Wednesday night. No, so, self-harm of that magnitude isn't that common, I think that's fair to say, isn't it? So, you know, it's like, that was pretty... Bro, you already shouldn't have been a prison officer, bro. Like, what are you talking about, bro? It only makes sense. Pretty traumatic. Yeah. I'm sorry he went through that early on, but... I guess, in hindsight, in another six months, it will probably be quite character building. You've got a lot of experience into your first week, so... <laughs> you know, <laughs> pretty traumatic for anyone to deal with, but particularly difficult, I think, someone who's just come into the job. That could, that could be a defining moment for him. I just want to see how he was, but clearly shaken up, but seems to be doing okay. I'd advise you go and do some work before you'll get behaviour warnings. I think the job as a whole is yes, what you expect it to be. Uh, sometimes it's not. Um, sometimes you don't expect to open the door and find blood gushing out of someone's neck. Officers are quitting the service every month, and staff are increasingly forced to deal with extreme situations. Yeah, yeah, well, you've, you've blown that, Jen, I'm in school, you've been behaviour.
We've also, also proven that you're really dead on place. But what they're saying is it's not genuine. Just one week on from her adjudication, Gemma resorted to violence after losing her vapes. She smashed her cell window in frustration and staff were forced to take action. From what I can gather, she's been asking for vapes because um, they didn't turn up in her canteen. She's quite rude staff. She started to rip up the mattress, so we had to take that out. And she just screamed at us all to get out. And as we left, she started to take her clothes off and to tie like a picture up at the bars. So I've been sat around for two weeks doing that. Obviously, I, I'm sat getting high again, and, and it's not good for me. We can't give up on her, really, because if we give up, then she's going to give up. She just needs to see that people actually care, and having that person there to consistently keep on top of her, I think, is what she needs, and she'll eventually take it on herself. Well, one day I'll get a dash she broke me up, and I'll take the punishment on the chin, because I'm going to get shit in my mouth. Every day, on average, 230 prisoners are in transit around the prison estate. Good luck to you, mate. The delicate stability of a wing. So you got Smith then in 2.30. Yeah, I don't pay attention to me. I'm high as hell, so... And it's been a long night, bro. Okay. Well, we're coming in the office for that. That's the last time I tell you. What about 302? 302, yeah. Three years. It's fussy, isn't he? It is a bit. But you just fucking got here. On Sea Wing, one influential prisoner is on the move. Morning. Anthony Gooch has spent over five months on remand for armed robbery. Now, all the charges against him have been dropped, and he's a free man. Millsy, keep your chin up, brother. I'll send you an email, all right? Go on, mate. Gooch was an insider of violence reduction rep. For me, Gooch leaving that particular spur is going to cause a few issues because they had it nice and settled. We don't have Kate self-policing, but it remained quiet. In a selfish way, I'm uh, a bit peed off because I've now got to start again and find out who's going to be top dog, as they say. Somebody else is obviously going to be trying to take over their spot. So there will be a power struggle for the next week or so. No, I was there. So you used to try sitting with plugs. Dot back, dot back, boom, one on his ass. Second one to hit me with a plug. And As Gooch leaves Bullingdon, a veteran of the prison system is second into Sea Wing. Aaron de Santos is inside for robbery and violence. He's been relocated from another part of the jail. What are you doing over here, de Santos? I'm just speaking to my friend that I haven't seen in a long time. Okay. Can you relocate back on square three, please? Thank you very much. All right, as well. Just watch the sound off from now. Yeah, yeah. And just watch him. The spur has felt a little bit uneasy since he's arrived on the spur. It was quite calm relatively before, but it's now a little bit up and down. I'm, I'm trying to make sure my mum's got a bit of money there. My mum broke. That broke, 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 fuck all. So I started stealing shit. I started, like, as a youth, I thought, what? If I like it, why don't I just take it? Then it just started from that. So I went up and bamboo, and this, that, and other. It's just life, innit? I don't want to live this life. I'm doing it because I have to. De Santos has been moved onto the wing after causing trouble elsewhere in the prison. Staff want to keep a close eye on him in the hope that they can prevent further disruption. Miss Robbins, I believe you're going to IR the conversation that you overheard regarding yeah. the Santos. Oh, yeah, um, is it the basic plan from Free Flow and said to Dos Santos that it is the basic plan that the beef's going to go down? I don't know who it was between. That was all I heard, really, so maybe just keep an eye on okay. him. Yeah. If he goes off a unit, uh, there are other prisoners within the establishment that. Um, Intend to harm him. Oh, you missed the fucking spot. Man. That's the charges were covered. Fuck you. It's not a proper prison. It's like a training camp for officers. Like, it's not run like a proper job. Mm. Been coming in since I was eighteen. I've been doing this shit for years. Done like twenty-three jails. So this is this ain't nothing. Else. So, 
Yeah. Give it a little mates over here. Yeah. With me. They said like he proud of that shit. What was the joke? But a lot of people don't want to kill me as well. But life in it. <laughs> Gemma James has now been in the segregation unit at Downview for a week after smashing her cell window. Damn. She's not allowed visitors or interaction with other prisoners, though she is allowed post. This is my favourite one because I never had one from funkypigeon.com. <laughs> 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 Read it out. So it says, to Gemma, happy birthday, thinking of you on your special day. You're a pain in the ass, but I will, I'll always love you, sis. Hope you are well and staying positive. Hope you have a lovely day. Love always, Amy, and loads of kisses. Another year older, and having had time to reflect, Gemma's come to a realisation. I cannot meet the system. It was double trouble, wasn't it, yesterday? The ball's in your court, really. I know, but the last 24 hours, we've been behaving well. Yeah. Before that, not so good. Mm. Yeah, and like you say, you're not going to get what you want, and no. you have a bit of defeat. Do you remember the story about the two wolves? No. Native American story. Brave went to the chief, and he said, there's a battle raging within me. It's tearing me apart. There's one wolf saying, tear, kill, get revenge, hate. And the other wolf, is said, which wolf is going to win? And the chief says it's the wolf you feed. Be the gem that we've seen before. Because we've seen the good and the bad in you. Yeah. yeah, I'm very grateful. Thank you for having me. Like many persistent offenders in Britain's jails, Gemma's many problems appear to stem from drug abuse. Introduced me to drugs when I was 14. It's ruined my whole life. But I'm scared that when I get out, where am I going to go? Like, am I going to end up just going back to what I know? <laughs> Muslim convert Gemma is planning to observe Ramadan. With her release date looming, she hopes it will inspire her to keep out of trouble. Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. I have to do it for Allah because everyone loves food, so we fast with our food. Uh, no sex, no, even this look, it tells you on it for fasting what you're not allowed to do. And it actually says on here, it says, no eating, drinking, swallowing. Masturbation with ejaculation, smoking, swallowing water when gargling, vomit, taking medication or blood or, or drugs. So I can put water in my mouth and spit it out because I know my lips are going to be very dry. I think I've become a better person when I'm being a Muslim and I'm trying and I'm being sincere in my heart. I feel something different and I feel very uplifted. There's a Ramadan to as well. Yeah. You're going to stop vaping? I have to. I've got no choice, but I'm going to struggle. I have to because I want to do it from my heart and I want to be forgiven for everything that I've done. Yeah. Gemma has got a lot more positive attitude behind her at the moment. I don't know what's happened. I think she's surrounded by a few better people, maybe. And that's encouraging her to behave herself and stay off the spice. She's getting out of debt and hopefully this will last a bit longer than last time. I feel like I'm having a constant battle with myself in my head every day, all the time, because... I don't want to be like this anymore. I don't want to do the things that I do. I'm tired, I'm bored, I'm sick of it. The only way I can find peace with that is the fact that I'll tell myself that I wasn't born Muslim, I wasn't born out of love. If I was born out of love and marriage and, and religion, maybe things might have been different. She'll always be Gemma. That's something you can't change. We've just got to change her mindset rather than her as a person because... She's who she is, and she can't change what she's done in the past, but she can change the way things pan out for her in the future. I think Gemma has an ability to make something of her life. She, she's just a person that needs to find herself first. In an ideal world, I wish that in five years, I would be five years drug-free, and I would definitely hope that I would have been here in prison. 
I would rather kill myself. That's telling the truth. In Bullingham, officers are concerned about a power vacuum after influential top dog prisoner Anthony Gooch left sea wing. The mood on the wing has changed dramatically, especially since the arrival of new inmate Aaron de Santos. Where you get look, you're locked up all day, so when you get out, you've got all this energy, so you've got to do something with it. What are you doing out here anyway? <laughs> Yes, not good, but go on. As prisoners jockey for position, disorder is spreading across the wing. Do you have like one thing, and then everyone knows, and then all of a sudden everyone's doing men, and they just jump on the bandwagon. Alrighty, this was recovered um, uh, by the phone boxes. It's solid metal. It's come, it's come from uh, one of the prisoners' chairs. So yes, if you get that around your head, or even around your body, it'll do some serious damage. The violence is escalating, and there's now a serious threat of anarchy on scene. In Bullingdon Prison, officers are now battling to keep control of Sea Wing. Before anybody leaves this unit prisoner wise, they will be completely rubbed down, searched, and they will be wanted. The information we've received is something is going to happen. Okay, keep an eye on me. In just over a week, there have been multiple assaults, one so serious the police have been called in. Governor Ian Blakeman calls a meeting of staff to review CCTV footage of a particularly serious in-cell assault. Obviously, people are aware we've had from our resource over the last couple of weeks in cell. He needs to identify culprits and interrogate how they did it. The bit we really want to take from this is just how sophisticated the destruction attempts are. So one of the ones involved in the first assault of Lips is Eric Gunn, Chairman Officer Robbins, and Shelley acted weird because he then put Susanna over his mouth and she's had to really concentrate on what he's saying. Eventually as they come down to the cell, you'll see he speeds up and actually stands in her view in front of that cell. So he's just her. And then you'll see the cell mate go in and warn the others, and then they quickly disperse. There's something really serious behind this, and we need to stamp it out. The crackdown begins. Officers have been told to target the suspected ringleaders. We received information that um, five prisoners were involved. So they've been relocated from their cells down to the SSCU pending an investigation. Sea yeah. Wing is currently locked down. In all, 13 prisoners end up in the segregation unit. Lovely. Thank you, everyone. Among them is Aaron de Santos, who's been linked to one of the most serious assaults. Obviously, I'm worried about nine months left. If this, if somehow, was by some bullshit, they managed to let say I'm involved, I'm fucked. And what about the other guys? Do you know the other guys that are involved? Yeah, I don't know everyone involved. I live with the people that are involved with that. But allegedly involved. Noises, Duty Governor Tarina Greenslade has come to the segregation unit to update all the prisoners on the investigation. Uh -oh. Justine Governor's rounds, how are you? 
Why are you down here? Well, have a, have a try. Why do you think you're down here? And I'm not saying you have. I'm here to tell you my story. What happened? But it's subject to a police investigation, so it wouldn't be appropriate for you to tell me about it. You need to tell them about it when they come back and speak to those that are suspected of being involved. So I have to stay down here till Monday? Yes. All right. Just leave it. We can't do the rounds. Mr. Santos, how are you? I could be better. I'm not going to make it any better for you. For, yes, until Monday at the end, all right? Potentially, yes. Look, I understand that. I'm happy for that. I'm not happy with that. Who are you? I know me. I'm used to it. Can we get a shield and observe that, make sure he's okay, but you must have a shield there because the ops panel's come through, please. Thank you, Nigel. I'll get the gate. I thought he'd put the ops panel. The priority now for staff is to relocate those believed to be responsible for the attack. Those that were involved, they're trying to arrange transfers to other establishments around the country. Mr. De Santos um, left the unit. He has been security moved away from Bullingdon to another establishment um, out of area. With his history of assaults and violence, a lot of establishments will not take him. But he will not be returning to this prison. As De Santos leaves, officers regain control of Sea Wing. Shut up! But it's not the only change on the way. Yeah? Don't call me a dickhead again. I've got a good relationship with quite a lot of prisoners on this way, and it'll be very sad when I leave them in some ways, because, you know... Okay, I don't know what happened. It just went silent right there, guys. My bad, y'all. Blaze, I know I was falling asleep a little bit. But, bro, I, I, I worked and stuff, y'all. I had to. Yeah, man. I'm tired as hell, man. But if y'all like these videos, man, y'all let me know, man. Leave a like on the video. Comment down below on the video. Y'all need to add some next. Y'all please, subscribe button, bro. We out, man. It's not on TV.